This demonstration will create the simple engineering component you can see here. Because of the power and flexibility Draftit offers, there are many methods and commands we could use to create this. This is just one example. First, we will create the circles on the front elevation. So we will click the circle button and select the center point. A quick way to define the radius point of the circle is to use any of the arrow keys to indicate a direction and then simply type in the radius value, in this case 55. Easy. We can press the enter button to repeat the command and snap to the same center point. Again use an arrow key for a direction and type in 20 for the radius. Repeat this again, this time the radius value is 30. If we take a look at our finished drawing again, we're now going to create the circle that's highlighted. The centre point of this circle is 45mm directly above the centre of the existing circle. We can use the relative snap here Position the cursor on the circle centers and press the R key. We can now define a point relative to this position. Rather than use the dynamic dimensions, just press the up arrow key and type in the distance, which is 45. It's a 12 diameter circle, so as with the other circles, press one of the arrow keys and type in the radius value, which is 6. We'll adjust the zoom a bit before we add some centre lines. OK, let's make our centre lines red and obviously we will use a centre line line style. We will draw a line straight up from the centre of the big circle. So we click the snap point here. Press F7 to turn snap mode on. We need the other end of the line to be 10 millimeters past the quadrant point here. So again, we can use the R key to go relative from this point, press the up arrow and enter 10. OK, so while we have the correct settings for our center lines, we may as well add the PCD circle. So we can pick the center point here, press F7 again, and select the 12 mm circle centre. Now this new centre line and circle are repeated every 45 degrees around the component centre. We use the polar array command to do this. Click on the line to select it. Now hold down the shift key and click to add the small circle to the selection. As you can see the array command on the ribbon has a small arrow next to it. Click on this to reveal the array commands and then select polar array. We need a total of eight holes in the array so we change this value here. The center of the array is the point the objects are rotated around so it is this point here. The reference point for our rotation is this point you can see that this point rotates around the centre. If we look at the prompt now, it wants the point to array to. Basically, this point is defining an angle between the two points clicked so far and the cursor. We could now snap to a point that defines this angle, but we don't have one. This is where the Draftit direct input feature is really handy. Simply type in 45. And look, as soon as we do, the values appear in a box by the cursor. Press enter and the array is complete. We will now create the side elevation and we can use the scroll bar to pan across. Let's change the colour and style back before we continue. There are so many ways that Draftit can help you create the side elevation. Let's start by selecting the line command and using the IntelliSnap function to help us to draw it accurately. When IntelliSnap is switched on, and you can see the button here, Draftit remembers points or snaps that you browse over. 
let's do it. You see, as we pause over this point, the snap turns red. This is telling us that the point has been stored. Now, any time the cursor aligns with this, a dotted line will be displayed. So when we click here, the first point of our line is exactly aligned with the top of the circle. We can do the same to define the other end point. So we use IntelliSnap to line up with the bottom of the circle. Now we just hold down the Shift key to lock the other axis and click into place. As we are attached to this point, we may as well draw the line that should be here. Press the right arrow key and enter 15. Again, we can use IntelliSnap to align with the top points here and Shift to lock the other axis again. Now click on the end point here and press Escape to end the line command and select it again to draw a new line. This time you can see we use the IntelliSnap feature to align with two points and click to accept. The right arrow key allows us to define the length of this line. Now IntelliSnap and the Shift key help us to locate the other end. And finally we simply snap to the perpendicular point. Let's now change to a dashed line style before we draw some of the hidden lines. For this next line, IntelliSnap and then Perpendicular define the points. An alternative to IntelliSnap is X and Y snaps. These keystrokes grab the X or Y coordinate of another point. Let's use this to define the first point of the next line. Position near the point we want to line up with and press the appropriate key. Here we want to grab the Y value, or vertical axis position, of this point. As we move the cursor across, you can see the dotted line locking the cursor to the point we just clicked on. So we move across and click on the other point for the line start point. Now the perpendicular point to draw the line. Let's do that again for one of the other lines. Notice here after we click the Y key on this point, that we are locked to that point and unlike in Telesnap, we can't now select another Y position. We can now use the offset command to finish the hidden lines. Notice that we can use points on the other views to define the offset distances. We don't need some of the lines highlighted, so we can trim them. There are various ways to do this. First, quick trim. This can be used to trim any portion of an entity, whether it's a midsection like this, or an end piece like this. An alternative to trimming the end point of a line is to use the entity handles like this. We can use the same technique to extend this center line using the shift key to constrain the axis. We can now add the remaining center lines for the holes using IntelliSnap. And that's it, done.